Well, it's summertime here in the Northern Hemisphere, and you know what that means. Going out to brunch in the full sun, going to the beach and falling asleep, waking up looking like a cooked lobster, uh, which you then attempt to alleviate by stumbling over to the beach bar and chugging down a bunch of Long Island iced teas, because that sounds delicious and hydrating, and then coating yourself in aloe vera and falling asleep in bed, leading to you waking up the next morning looking and feeling like Peter Venkman in the New York Public Library. I feel so funky. Okay, just to be clear, please do not do that. But as you might have guessed, due to the specificity, I did do that in my early 20s. And basically every choice I made that day was wrong. Don't go out in the sun without sun protection. Don't fall asleep on the beach. And absolutely do not try to recover from a sunburn, which can severely dehydrate you by chugging alcohol, which also severely dehydrates you. Chug water for fuck's sake. The aloe, well, that probably did help. At least one randomized controlled trial of only 20 participants found it to be no different from a placebo when treating sunburn, but aloe is a known anti-inflammatory, and so many more studies have shown the opposite, as detailed in this 2019 systematic review of 23 trials, of which five related to the treatment of burns, that concluded aloe vera was more effective than petroleum jelly, gauze dressing, silver sulfodiazine 1% ointment, and framacetin cream whatever. Moreover, it reduced the recovery time, prevented infection in the wound area, and prevented redness and itching. In these studies, aloe vera was more effective in first and second degree burn wounds than in the other degrees. As described in Table 1, it is concluded that aloe vera can reduce the healing time of first and second degree burns to nine days. But I will say that cleaning the sheets was annoying and gross. Prevention, which aloe vera probably does not help with, is truly better. The problem is this, what is the best way to prevent a sunburn? It seems like every summer I get people writing in to ask if it's true that sunscreen is actually secretly bad for you. The usual reason for this is crunchy hippie influencers online claiming that because sunscreen is full of chemicals uh, that we rub all over our skin, our bodies absorb these chemicals and that leads to problems, usually cancer. And it's not only individuals on TikTok spreading these ideas. Once or twice a year, I see the mainstream news credulously report results from groups like the Environmental Working Group, which has been fear-mongering about various common products for many years now. In fact, it was an entire decade ago that Jenny Splitter, a writer for Grounded Parents, wrote this takedown of EWG's specific sunscreen fear-mongering. She pointed out that each year, EWG puts out a list of dangerous and safe sunscreens, and it just so happens that the board members of EWG owned stakes in all of those safe versions, and they profited again by selling those through their list thanks to affiliate links. The same scary ingredients EWG was crying about a decade ago are those mentioned every year by social media influencers. Oxybenzone, which they claim causes hormonal changes, does not demonstrate significant endocrine disruption, even with application of a formulation containing 10% oxybenzone. In fact, after 40 years of use, we are not aware of any published study that demonstrates acute toxic effects in humans with systemic absorption of oxybenzone. Say dermatologists in a letter published in the Journal of the American Medical Association's Dermatology Imprint. Those same scientists rebutted the claim that retinal palmitate, a form of vitamin A, causes cancer. There is no evidence that the inclusion of RP in sunscreens is photocarcinogenic in human beings. And there have been dozens of studies since showing that RP is actually pretty great for your skin. And studies on sunscreen itself over the past 50 years has shown undeniably that they significantly reduce your chances of contracting skin cancer. In a systematic review of the dangers of sunscreen published last year, researchers found that other than the rare possibility of a skin allergy, the only potential issue, not proven, might be something like a vitamin D deficiency or an issue with your blood pressure due not to anything in the sunscreen itself, but simply to a lack of direct sunlight hitting your body. So no, you do not have to worry about the chemicals and sunscreen that protect you from issues like melanoma. Because seriously, sunburns lead to cancer. One study of more than 100,000 people over the course of 20 years 
found that getting five sunburns that blister between the ages of 15 and 20 increases the risk of melanoma by 80%. So is chemical sunscreen the only protection you have anyway? No. While it's dangerous to scare people away from using it, it's also not helpful to tell people that that's the only thing that they should rely upon. You can also protect yourself by using things like this. This is a little uh, zinc sunscreen that limits the amount of sun that hits your skin using an actual physical barrier, and which is necessary if you do things like spend a lot of time in the water, say surfing in Costa Rica, where everyone around you looks like a lobster. You can also wear sun blocking clothing like the rash guard that I am wearing right now. Obviously, you know, all clothes are going to block some amount of sun, but there are certain fabrics and weaves that do a better job of it. And there are some specifically made to block the sun that come with their own UPF rating, which is basically like an SPF for clothes. Of course, you can also take the nerd route. You can just stay in your basement playing video games all the time. But I do have to point out that getting a little sun is good for you. As I learned when I spent a few winters in Buffalo, New York, and I had to take vitamin D supplements on my doctor's orders to help with my depression. And being physically active outside is good for your physical and mental health any time of year. So if you want to live your happiest and healthiest life, maybe try doing things IRL every once in a while. All of this video so far has been about how sunscreen is safe for you, the person applying it onto your skin. But I'd be remiss if I didn't address how safe sunscreen is for the environment because, you know, there has been a lot of talk in the past few years um, about what happens to the sunscreen that gets washed off your skin and into the ocean. Uh, the main focus is usually on coral. In a review of the literature published in 2021 in Environmental Toxicology and Chemistry, environmental scientists point out that up to 14 different organic UV filters have been found concentrated in the water around coral reefs, which are currently suffering from a worldwide decline that has dangerous knock-on effects to the rest of the ecosystem. That correlation has led to this hypothesis that the bleaching of coral reefs may be exacerbated by these ingredients from people wearing them in sunscreen, in the water, as well as those appearing in runoff. But the authors say that there is limited evidence to suggest that their presence is causing significant harm to coral reefs. That said, they want more careful monitoring because it would be premature to conclude that environmental concentrations of UV filters do not adversely impact coral reefs. So the coral is probably dying thanks to bigger issues like rising sea temperatures and pollution, but sunscreen might be making things worse. Research has been done on specific ingredients found in many sunscreens and found around these coral reefs. And, you know, in Petri dishes, they do seem to negatively affect coral reefs. So, you know, the limited evidence on this has led to some areas like Hawaii requiring people to only wear what's called reef-safe sunscreens, which most often means they forgo some of those chemicals most likely to affect coral, at least, you know, in the limited studies that have been done, like octinoxate and oxybenzone. Those sunscreens do tend to be much more expensive and the benefits aren't yet well studied, but it's certainly something to consider if you plan to be in or near the ocean where coral reefs are trying to recover. As for me, I do try to wear sunscreen every day because I tend to be outside every day, gardening, cycling, hiking, surfing, whatever. And there's evidence to suggest that everybody could benefit from doing that too, uh, even when it's overcast outside. Your skin is your largest organ and the one most likely to get cancer. So it's probably a good idea for you to take care of it. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.